The seventh most common question or the seventh misconception in Islam in the minds of non-Muslim is that why does Islam subjugate the woman by keeping her behind the wheel? Why does Islam subjugate the woman by keeping her in hijab? Before I discuss the reason of hijab, let us analyze what was the status of the woman in the past civilizations. When we read the history of Babylonian civilization, it says that women were ill-treated. And if a man committed murder, his wife was put to death. This was the law. If you read the history of the Greek civilization, known as a very great civilization, at that time, they believed in an imaginary woman by the name of Pandora, who was the cause of all the evil in the society. In that great Greek civilization, women were used for sex and pleasure. Prostitution was common. When you read the history of Roman civilization, even in Roman civilization, the women were looked down upon. Nudity and prostitution was common. When we read the history of Egyptian civilization, the woman was considered as an evil and she was called as an instrument of the devil. When we read the history of Arab civilization, before Quran was revealed, the Arabs, very often, they buried the female alive after she was born. Alhamdulillah, summa alhamdulillah. After the revelation of the Quran, this evil practice has stopped, but yet it persists in other parts of the world. Islam, alhamdulillah, uplifted the woman. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, was the major benefactor in giving the rights to the woman. And after Islam has given rights to the woman, it has even shown us a way how that woman should maintain her status. Hijab has been prescribed to the woman so that she maintains the status and doesn't go back to the old days. Normally, people talk about hijab for the woman, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the glorious Quran first speaks about the hijab for the man and then speaks about the hijab for the woman. Quran says in Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 30, say to the believing man that he should lower his gaze and guard his modesty. Whenever a man looks at a woman, if any brazen thought, any unashamed thought comes, he should lower his gaze. This is what the Quran says. Once, there was a Muslim man who was staring at a girl for a long time. I told him, brother, what are you doing? This is haram in Islam. He told me, our beloved prophet said, the first glance is forgiven, the second is prohibited. I have not completed half my glance. <laughs> what did the prophet mean when he said, the first glance is forgiven, second is prohibited? What the prophet meant was, that if you unintentionally look at a woman, don't look at her again. That does not mean you can look at a woman for 10 minutes without blinking and saying, I have not completed my glance. The next verse of Surah Noor, chapter 24, verse number 31, speaks about the hijab for the woman. That whenever a woman looks at a man, and if any breath and thought comes, she should lower her gaze. There are basically six criteria for hijab given in the glorious Quran and Hadith regarding the clothing of hijab. The first is, the extent. As far as for the man is concerned, the extent is from the navel to the knee. For the woman, the complete body should be covered. The only parts that can be seen are the face and the hands up to the wrist. The remaining five criteria for the man and the woman are the same. The second is, the clothes they wear, they should be loose. It should not be tight-fitting so that it reveals the figure. The third, it should not be transparent or translucent so that a person can see through it. Fourth, it should not be so glamorous so that it attracts the opposite sex. Fifth, it should not resemble that of the opposite sex. And sixth, it should not resemble that of the unbeliever. These are basically the six criteria for hijab regarding clothing, but this does not constitute the complete hijab. The complete hijab besides the hijab of the clothing also includes the behavior, the conduct, the attitude, as well as the intention of the person. Besides the hijab of the clothing, there's hijab of the eyes, hijab of the heart, hijab of the mind, hijab of the thought. 
It even includes where a person talks, the way a person walks, the way a person behaves. This is a complete hijab.